was snow. Now it's not snowing in May. Don't worry about it. But I'm talking about the company Snowflake Industries. It's a data cloud company. Super interesting because it's another one of these interesting AI plays that we can really hang our hat on. I know we talk about AI all the time, but let's face it, it is all around us and it hasn't quite yet been entirely saturated. All of its use cases haven't been entirely found. If you look at the chart here, Snowflake is a really fun one because we're looking at another chart that is we're having a rough experience. <laughs> As you guys can see, uh, during their last earnings call back in February, we saw this thing, uh, well, uh, you can't see it quite yet, but yeah, here we go. Uh, during last earnings call in February, just like Shopify, we saw this thing get hit over the head and find some real, real negative downside, although the earnings were pretty doggone good. So why am I a little bit more bullish on snow now, even though we had a surprise miss on earnings per share to the tune of 21%? To the downside. I'm going to say a lot of the same things I said about Shopify, and it's going to surprise you, but this is an opportunity I'm much more excited about. This is not something that I am buying today, but it's very well be made something that I'm buying tomorrow. And here's why. One, although the company hasn't made money, which is a big deal for me, you guys know I always talk about, hey, we're in the stock market, we're in the game with the big boys, you shouldn't be allowed to go play outside if you didn't do your homework and make money. I, I do, I truly do believe that. However, we talked a little bit about guidance, both David and I, when we talked about our different equities, our different opportunities, guidance was a really big piece of the puzzle. Forward guidance for McDonald's, garbage. Forward guidance, for Shopify, garbage. Forward guidance for Under Armour, it's under the garbage can. I don't know where that is. I don't know how far deep that goes. I don't know if you guys saw the video. There was a video of uh, someone walking on New York City. They stepped on a piece of concrete and it fell through and into the subway. That's where the guidance for Under Armour is. The guidance for Snowflake is incredibly positive because AI and the entire data computing space still has so much room to grow. Now, back in February, some weird stuff was going on with the company. Uh, they got rid of their longtime CEO, basically the founder. His name was Frank. You ever met a Frank you can't trust? I haven't. The guy, Frank Slootman, absolutely incredible human being, put together this incredible wildly beautiful company back in 2012 and grew it to billions upon billions of dollars. Everything you want to see out of the CEO, everyone's thinking this guy, this old dude, he's going to take good care of my money. It's good, good care of my money. All of a sudden he surprisingly says, Hey guys, I'm done right before the earnings call. Great decision, right? Not, not, not really. But when he made this decision, when he went ahead and did this thing, who did they replace him with? They replaced him with the senior vice president of AI at Snowflake. They, they're seeing that everyone's starting to see the writing on the wall, and they're seeing that hey, we need to make sure we need to make sure that we're not only playing this AI game, but that we are out front and center on these AI plays. Uh, the gentleman's name is, I, I, I have to admit, it's difficult for me to pronounce, and you guys know how international I am, so that's. As saying something, Remeswami, Remeswami is what we're going to say. I pray to God that I am not butchering that one too much. But what he's done with the company is produce and start talking about much more in the way of AI data solutions for their customers. And it's made a huge difference. Let's take a look into, into the candlesticks a little bit. Look at the capital structure and look at some of the things that I've been excited about when looking at these equities. You guys know how I feel about debt. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I don't like credit cards. I don't like I don't like loans. I don't like mortgages. I don't like treasury bills. All of it's debt. All of it's debt. Um, I own treasury bills because it's it's debt to me, but it's different. It's debt. I don't like it. I don't like it. I get I get the gibbers. I'm I'm getting like my, my, my screen's crawling as we're speaking about this. I don't like it. Um, when you have a market cap of $55 billion and your total debt is $280 million, that's a drop in the bucket, especially when you have cash to the, to the tune of $3.5 billion. 
that's really, really, really healthy. In terms of minority interest, we ha we're at 9.5 million. No, that's not a bunch of black and Puerto Rican people that own the company, but we don't have to worry <laughs> about it. Uh, that's it's it's all this is very, very, very healthy. This is what we this is what we want to see, guys. Um, when we're looking at the performance, the growth and profitability, it is true. And like I said before, it is true. They have struggled to make money, um, but it's not as back and forth, forth and back as it was with Shopify. It, we're starting to see this thing on a positive upswing. We did see a little bit of a pullback here, but their revenue is continually growing and they're continually finding more opportunities to develop bigger and better products. One of the reasons why they lost so much in the way of a 300 to tune of 300 million, which is no drop in the bucket. That's quite a bit of money. One of the reasons why they lost that much money was they're spending so much on research and development in these AI products. They're really trying to prepare themselves for this AI boom that has been hitting us over the head for the past 12 months. And they've been succeeding. Now, as things move forward, a big piece of the puzzle for their guidance is their operating expenses. They expect as our operating they expect as our operating business, they expect as time moves forward that their operating expenses will begin to fall and that the value of their products will begin to rise month over month, uh, year over year. They have over a thousand customers, over a thousand customers spending a million dollars a year with them uh, on on uh, year over year. It's 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 incredible when you look at those kinds of numbers and those. There's still much, 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 much room to grow. Um, they have something to the order of 409 Forbes, Forbes 1000 companies. We're not even talking about Forbes 100. They almost have all of the market share in the Forbes 100, but they have a ton of market share in the Forbes 1000 that is continually growing year over year. And they're finding these really great opportunities to put themselves in front of these great companies and say, hey, we can offer you better cloud computing we can offer you better security for your data so on and so forth when you look at how they perform relative to their earnings we've seen nothing but positive moves up and up and up surprise 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 almost all of them to the upside outside of this most recent earnings report looking next uh this is something from market watch you know wall street breathes a sigh of relief one of the reasons why the people are saying they're breathing a sigh of relief is because this is a company that, again, is connected to that AI. There's so much in the way of growth where we saw 24% growth in product re re revenue relative year over year. Um, during the full year uh, thus far, Snowflake has grown product revenue by 38%. This is really impressive. Uh, any year where you have a new CEO, we actually talked about this a little bit uh, a few sessions ago when we talked about our first not buying it, talking about the performance of CEOs and what happens when a CEO dies or leaves or retires unexpectedly. Usually it doesn't do great things for the stock and the stock has been seeing a definite pullback here. But even though we're seeing a definite pullback, we're seeing the company produce more and more in the way of revenue and more and more in the way of exciting products. That's one of the reasons why their product revenue has been able to grow so much. Um, the forecast called from for their uh, second quarter product revenue to be between 805 million, 810 million. This outlook implies 26 to 27% growth. All of these things are super positive. These are the kind of numbers that I wanna see when I'm talking about an equity that I'm interested in being a part of. This is an article that says more or less the same thing that the last one was saying. I'm not sure why I have it here, but it also says a lot of really great numbers. Uh, the numbers are all fantastic. Um, and actually one number that I neglected to talk about was the fact that they have so many employees. This is why I had the article up here. Uh, the company had 7,296 workers at the end of the quarter, almost a thousand more than the same period of uh, the previous year. This, does that seem weird to you, David? That seems a little weird to me because everybody is firing everybody. Uh, I mean, when you look at the performance of a TJ Maxx or a Target, part of the reason why they're doing so well is because they are closing down stores. They're getting rid of employees. They're getting rid of one of their biggest cost of goods sold, one of their biggest uh, liabilities, so to speak, and its employees. 
Yep. Getting rid of people is a great way to boost your stock price uh, for the for the short term and kind of prop things up. It's it's just the way it is. We talk a lot about negative numbers on this channel and talk about how it's not emotional, you know, uh, it's not personal, but we're going to get rid of your way of making money for you and your family it, it, because it looks really good in the numbers. I we can't get super emotional about that. But I can't, I can't help. I'm a hot-blooded American, guys. I can't help it but feel fantastic when the company says, not only are we not going to get rid of people, we are going to hire nearly yeah. 500 more. You know, I'm sorry, nearly um, 1,000 more a thousand employees. More, yeah. <clears throat> 1,000 more. And it's, 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 it's incredible. So it's like a 15% is, increase. It's, it's like a 15% increase. increase. It's a massive increase. You talk about a company that's out there hiring this many people. Uh, you know, yep. it's in the growth stage. And then the biggest reason for yep. the drop you're talking about, uh, the CEO left. But is the C, yep. you know, is he core to their business? Is he the, re you know, and what, I, and what I mean by that is, does he have, is he the only person with the secret sauce that knows how to do these things for right. these companies? Right. I would I would venture to guess that probably not. He provided that guidance and that's why everybody's a little scared. But in terms of like, the core of their business and how they conduct business and the processes and the products and how they, you know, I, that, that hasn't changed. So that's, that's, what's very interesting to me. No, hundred percent. And it's, I think it's such a beautiful thing when you're looking at a, a company like this, look, it's, it's, it's in the tech space. So tech, tech stocks, as you guys know, they usually don't perform well in high uh, interest rate environments. So it's no surprise that a CEO retires uh, AI is very, very expensive products to work with. Uh, we have high interest rates. FOMC minutes came out yesterday. Guess what? We're not seeing rate cuts. Um, all of these things aren't, aren't great for a tech stock. And yet we're seeing them continually hire more people. We're seeing them produce guidance that says, hey, we have an optimistic outlook, not just about, about the next 24 to 18 to 24. We have, an out, we have an optimistic outlook to the next three to six months. All of these things are incredibly positive for this kind of equity. Last but not least, I'll show you guys what this actually looks like on the site. Again, never take my word for it. Always do your own research. Go to the site. Read the numbers. Find for yourself whether or not this is something exciting for you. For me, this is an opportunity I'm looking to buy soon.